On behalf of the Chicago residents that have come overnight from Chicago, of Nagasak and the Korean American Resource and Cultural Center in Chicago, the Korean Resource Center in Los Angeles, and the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, we want to really deeply thank you for your tremendous leadership on immigration reform and in this movement. We recognize you for your work as chair of the Immigration Task Force for the Democratic Caucus, your membership on the Judiciary Committee, and in the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. We also deeply appreciate your leadership at the grassroots level, and I've had the privilege of attending many of the meetings you constantly have with community members, leaders, and faith leaders in the Chicago area. On your recent tour around the country, I'm sure you've heard stories that are similar to the ones that we have heard today, and unfortunately that we continue to hear every day. These are the stories of the people who inspire all of us, including you, to do our work. It has been almost one year under the new administration, and while there have been many promises, there has been little action, and we can't wait anymore. We are asking that these promises be fulfilled and that something is done now. So Congressman Gutierrez, a champion of all immigrants. I also have the pleasure of working with you on the Familias Unidas tour, and I'm grateful of traveling with you to various cities, from Atlanta to Detroit to Milwaukee to Minnesota, and our own home state, and also city in Chicago. Um, so, um, in our style of getting commitments, here is the question. So Congressman Gutierrez, as you know, the White House and the congressional leadership, uh, Pelosi, Congresswoman Pelosi and Senator Reid, have said that this is a priority for our communities. But, as, uh, but we also want them to know how urgent this is all for us right now. Will you play a direct leadership role along with the CHC and KPAC and making sure that our progressive immigra a progressive immigration reform bill is introduced this year. Yes or no? Si se puede. immigration bill that tells this debate that we're having what it is we want, what it is we require. What yes! I want to do it, but we have to figure out the language so that we can take a DREAM Act bill that makes sure that those kids immediately get the kind of financial aid that they need and we don't have to that says, you know, you really, if you don't want to join the military, you don't have to join the military. That says, that gives the same right that every American citizen has when they make the decision about going to school and making a priority of their life. So, 
I mean, I want to make sure we have a progressive bill that reunites families. But you know, if you've been waiting 20 years in the Philippines, then you should wait 20 seconds after we pass that bill before your family members get their visas to come here to this country immediately. Yeah. 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 There should be a family reunification bill that says that immediate family members will be reunited and we're going to have target dates. So let's, let's write it. But let's write it together. And let's make sure that we understand enforcement. It's important. But let's make it humane enforcement. Let's make it the kind of enforcement that's smart and doesn't discriminate and doesn't target and finger point against our immigrant community. We can do that kind of, because I'm gonna tell you one thing. I think we're gonna write a comprehensive book that says very clearly, si tu eres un criminal, if you're a criminal and you pray in our community and you sell drugs and you join a gang and you do harm, we will not stand up and we will not raise our voices for you. But we are ready to raise the voice for all of those that work hard, sweat and toil, and follow all, right. all of you. A progressive, comprehensive immigration bill doesn't have to be one that isn't strong and doesn't keep our community safer from those who will prey upon it. Because we are the first and most of the time, the only victim of those people who prey on our community. So let's be very clear about where we're at. So I'm ready to work with you and in the next few weeks, because I know some of us are getting together on October 13th. Yeah. Yes! Yes! I don't know if we'll have it ready by then. But you know what? We can have all our principles ready. My conda and I can figure out if we're working together, and if we're going to stand together, we can get members of the Black Caucus together. We have many friends in the Black Caucus. Many friends in the Black Caucus. You know, I spoke to Charlie Randall the other day, and I said, I said, I can say this, you know, because we're colleagues. So I said, Charlie, what about, he said, I want to build it. We don't have to apologize anymore. <laughs> I want a bill that says, in America, people can say, I forgive you. It's okay. We understand you made a mistake. I want a bill that says, let's move on. Is that the kind of bill you're going to introduce? I said, well, if I can work with my friends on a comprehensive immigration bill that's progressive, that's the kind of bill that I want. He says, then I will be there and stand with you. Yeah. So let's have the kind of bill that when we go to Barbara Lee, who the last time gave me, you know, when I introduced Strive with Senator Kennedy, we introduced the together in a bicameral, bipartisan, and it was a good movement forward. But there's not going to be any touchback in a bill that the progressives introduce in the Congress of the United States. This is going to be a bill that says you fill out your paperwork here, you pay whatever fines you're going to pay here, you stay here, and there's not going to be any reporting for deportation under our bill or any fear, because we understand that a progressive bill understands fundamentally one thing. That if we're going to be successful, then people are going to have to believe that it's real. Because look, millions of people aren't simply going to wake up one day and say, Oh, mira, Luis Gutierrez pasó esa propuesta, pues vente, vamos a ir a la oficina a llenar los papeles. They're not going to wake up one day and say, Oh, let me go fill out the papers, Luis Poso got passed. There's a lot of fear in our community. So people have to have to feel, have to understand, have to grasp, right? Have to believe, have to embrace the result of the legislative body and say, that's something that I can believe in. That's something that I'm ready to go sign up for. That's something, because if there isn't cooperation and volunteer cooperation, where the people come forward, the undocumented come forward, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work if they don't believe, if they believe that this is just another, and you know what? good reason. They have good reason. Look at this. We have a progressive president of the United States, but deportations are up. Yes. We have a progressive president of the United States, but more families are being united, divided than ever before. Right. We have a progressive president of the United States, but 287G was reauthorized, yeah. and Sheriff Alpaya was still out there discriminating and his oh. hatred instead of being killed. Oh. Democrats and we're talking about, oh, you know what, even on health care, oh, make sure. I mean, 
mean, come on. They hear it, they go, mira, este, the president said that uh, illegals, you know, you know, at least Bush called them undocumented. You gotta give Bush credit. <laughs> no, no, we're going backwards. We went from them being called undocumented under the Bush administrator, right? Where all his secretaries and all, that's true. Well, they call them undocumented. You're like, they're learning the language because that means they understand, right? Because language is important, and how you define people is important. And they go, oh, they're calling us illegal again. That's what. No, I don't do this to criticize my own, but just to give you a sense. So I tell you all of this. I think you're right to raise the question because it's heading in the wrong direction. The debate is heading in the wrong direction. It's heading such in the wrong direction that even under health care reform, where there are going to be private companies competing, private companies with no taxpayer funding, with not a cent, even when you go to that mall, right, that exchange, you got to prove you're an American citizen. Where are we going? Is it next year before you get gas or you get your electricity bill hooked up? You got to prove you're a citizen? No, think about it. It's a slippery slope. First it was about government and taxpayer sponsored stuff. But now it's going to be even worse. So I think it's a great time to do it. But I want to do it with you. So my response is yes, Juan. Yes. I want to do it. In the end, if our bill does not unite and bring together people, then I think we've lost a very important fundamental objective. A bill for a bill's sake, we all know we could write that. It has to be a bill that brings all the progressive forces together, that has good family reunification, that keeps our students together, that keeps families together. We said it early on. And let's remember that's a bill that organizes the base. If it, if it criminalizes them, if it says they gotta show up and somehow plead guilty for working, for contributing, then you're going to have the same response that you had to the of breath. And I think that's what we've learned fundamentally. We have to be who we are. We have to represent who we are. And who we represent and who we are are the best and the most progressive and the brightest and the most caring and humane comprehensive immigration bill and stand for that as we debate and negotiate. that brings people in LA together, that brings people in New York, that brings Asians and Africans together, huh? that brings Latinos of all different stripes together, that brings us all together, that brings the AFL, see, we can't let them go. We can't say to our brothers and neighbors, oh, we ain't listening. We do a progressive bill where we sit down with SEIU, where we sit down with Unite Here, we sit down with the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, where we sit down with the AFL-CIO and we say, we're working together. We got to keep all of our members of our army, right? The bill is, right? A, 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 a role, right? The bill allows us to create the army that will allow us to be successful people in the end. If that's what you want to engage in, I'm ready to engage in you. But it will be a different bill. It will be a unique bill, but it will be the kind of caring and compassionate bill we can all be very, very proud of. Thank you very much.
what Congressman Gutierrez said, caring and compassionate immigration reform. Doesn't that sound so much more beautiful? Yes. Okay, so now are you ready to do the hard work? Yes. Okay, we're gonna go um, now to Capitol Hill and we are going to be talking to other leaders to stand with our communities, to stand with our families, and to stand with our elected leaders. We have a lot of elected representatives, but few elected leaders. So I have a couple of announcements before we're done. Um, there is going to be a lobbying training for those who didn't get it yesterday, immediately following this program. We are to walk together to the Church of the Reformation for lunch before our cultural rally. And so there's gonna be people who are gonna be guiding you um, uh, towards that walk. It's a short walk, but you know what? We have a lot of energy after this dialogue, right? And we're gonna walk as much as we need to to get there. Um, and also for all of you who are doing legislative visits, it's 10 minutes to walk into the security um, through to get to those visits. So take that in mind. So let's get up. Let's take all the energy, all that, all that love. Because there's a lot of pain, but a lot of love that we come here and let's move forward and let those people know.